Hello, I'm Ben Woodruff from the Hutchings Museum in Lehigh, Utah. In this video, we're going to be talking about rendering down pine tree sap into pine pitch and how to make pine pitch glue. Pine pitch is a very valuable commodity. It was important to Native Americans. It was used for things such as waterproofing baskets so that they could be used to carry water. It was also made into pine pitch glue to attach arrowheads to their shaft. If you want to make pine pitch glue, you first have to get back deep into a pine tree or fir tree forest. It's good to get deep enough into the backcountry that you can find old growth trees. A lot of these older trees have damage from porcupines or woodpeckers or even just from broken branches. This results in sap flowing freely from the trees. When you begin to look out for these golden nuggets of sap, it almost becomes a treasure hunt. When you do find a good formation of this sap, then take out your pocket knife and cut in and carefully remove a few of these nuggets of sap. Now, it's very important to do this in a way that does not cause any damage to the tree. Fortunately, this is, this is very easy to do. But as you are cutting, uh, you'll quickly end up with several bags full of pine tree sap ready to render down to make into pine pitch. Once you're back at home, you can sort through and you'll be able to see you'll have many pieces some will be stickier and some will be almost like amber and then you take all of these put them in an old soup can Native Americans of course did not have tin cans but instead used very small clay pots this can be done as well Native Americans would heat over the coals of a fire not open flame Open flame can be very risky when, when rendering down pine pitch because it can leap over the lid of the can or the pot and ignite what's inside. So we'll be using something different. Now once you have your can ready, you need two stirring sticks and two or three glue sticks. The stirring sticks, uh, I typically use bamboo shush kebab skewers or chopsticks. The fact that they're narrow makes it easier to stir the thick pine pitch. But you do need two thicker sticks as well. This is what we are going to build up the glue on and store it on when it's finished. An old camp stove works better than an open fire because temperatures can be regulated. The reason for this is we don't want to boil the pine pitch. Fill a can halfway to two-thirds full and begin the process of rendering down. You can see the bottom very quickly begins to, to bubble and it looks like we're almost done, but if we poke in there and we see, there's huge chunks that have not yet rendered down. So it's crucial at this stage to keep the pine pitch moving. We don't want it to openly boil, and we can take a fork or a spoon and take out the chunks of bark that and other impurities that may be inside. We want a nice smooth flow of, of beautiful amber pine pitch. Once you're to this stage, you're about set. You can see the sap is clean and drips, and we have beautifully rendered down pine pitch. Now at this stage, it can be utilized to waterproof a basket, just as Native Americans did, or we can take the next step and turn it into pine pitch glue. Pine pitch glue was often used to attach a knife blade to a handle, an arrowhead, spear, or harpoon to its shaft, or a stone ax blade to its wooden handle. One of the great strengths of using pine pitch glue when attaching or hafting a blade is that a spearhead or an arrowhead attached in this manner has a much sleeker profile. You can see from a side view how there's no resistance when this is launched at a big game animal for dinner. This by comparison to a blade that is attached just by being tied. You can see where the stone meets the wood, there's definitely a resistance point. This again can be overridden with the use of pine pitch glue. Now we're ready to convert our pine pitch into pine pitch glue. Gather some charcoal or carbonized wood left over from a campfire, smash it down into a fine powder with a small rock. Then take this fine powder and begin adding it to the pine pitch one pinch at a time. One pinch at a time, begin to mix about a ratio of half and half. It's important though not to have too much of this carbonized charcoal as it will make your glue brittle. 
Some tribes would even add a bit of jackrabbit poop to this mixture as an additional bonding agent. Once your glue is thick, begin wrapping it around your glue stick and building it up. Once it cools down, you will have glue sticks with hardened pine pitch glue over them, looking much like a black hot dog on a stick. These can be stored, and when used, just use a lighter or an open flame to reheat them and set your blades. Whether you're making pine pitch glue or rendering down pine pitch to waterproof baskets, understanding these ancient skills adds depth and appreciation to the artifacts we see. If you enjoyed this video and like learning about history, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit the Hutchings Museum at 55 North Center Street in Lehigh, Utah.